Hi everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to persist conversations with LangGraph and how to use that persistence mechanism to perform a human in the loop workflow, which allows to force an LLM to ask for permission before it continues to use a tool or even to override, overrule an answer of an LLM. Please make sure that you watched my introduction to LangGraph and feel comfortable with state, nodes and edges before you watch this video. Link to that video is in the description. Okay, I'm in VS Code and here on the left you can see multiple notebooks. The notebook relevant for this video is human in the loop IPyth notebook. If you don't have that repository yet, you can clone it from the link in the description. So first we're gonna load our OpenAI API key. You can of course use any other open source model if you want to. So let's load that. And the next step is to create our state for LangGraph. We're gonna create a custom class called state, which inherits from typed dict. And this class has got a single attribute, which is annotated here with a list and here the second argument of annotated is add messages. This is a utility function of LangGraph and this allows us to add a new message to this list every time the state is changed. So we're gonna update this state automatically with a new AI message or a human message. So that's very comfortable to use it that way. The next step is to import other classes and functions which we need for our agent and we're gonna use a Tavily search tool for our agent. So we're gonna use as LLM based search in the internet to find out information the LLM does not currently have. So we import Tavily search results. We're also gonna use chat OpenAI to create our LLM. And very important now, we're gonna import a special class which is in the checkpoint module. The checkpoint module has got multiple classes which allows us to add uh, a persistence mechanism to LangGraph, and this is called CheckPointer. So I'm gonna show you that by example, and we're gonna use the SQL Lightsaber because we don't have to set up any database or anything. We can just use an in-memory version of that SQLite database. So we're gonna use the from connection string method and pass in here this string as um, memory. So we currently have a SQLite database in memory, and then we're gonna create our graph. So we're gonna use the state graph class from LangGraph, which inherits now our state. And to create our nodes and edges, we first have to define our chat OpenAI class. So we're gonna instantiate the chat OpenAI class. We're also gonna instantiate the Tavily search results class. So we have got a search tool, which we have to pass in a list, and we have to pass that list to the bind, bind tool method uh, from the LLM. And now we've got an LLM which um, has got a tool calling under its belt. So we're gonna use that as our agent. Here we've got another function which is called chatbot. This is used as node in our graph. So we pass in the complete state. And from that state, we extract the messages key or attribute. And we're gonna pass all the messages to the invoke method of our LLM with tools. And we're gonna return the new state and this will update the state of our graph. So let's run that to define the LLM and also our function. And now we can complete our graph. So we're gonna add a node called chatbot where we pass in that chatbot function. We're gonna use a special two node class from LangGraph which allows us just to pass a list of tools. And we're gonna add that tool node here with the add tool method which we call tool. So this is the key and this is the function here, and then we're gonna add a conditional edge. We're gonna use the tools condition function from LangGraph, which makes it very easy to define if a tool has to be called or not, because this abstracts away the result from the API, because normally we would have to check if in the AI message there is a attribute called tool calling or not, and we don't have to do that. So that's very convenient to use that. So we're gonna create a conditional edge and then we're gonna create another edge because after tool usage, we're gonna route back to the chatbot to create a final answer. And our entry point for our chat application is the chatbot. So let's create that. And the next step is to compile the graph. Now we've got two new arguments. We've got a checkpoint argument where we pass in the memory. So we can now create a so-called config which we pass in to the invoke method which has got a special thread ID here. And you can think of a thread ID of a special conversation ID. So each conversation has got a special thread ID and if you pass 
that config with the related ID, then you can always continue with that conversation. So that's a very nice convenience feature from Langref. And we also pass another argument, which is interrupt before. So if we pass that, we tell Langref that we want to interrupt the graph if we end in the node tools. Then the execution will interrupt and we as human are now in the loop. So that's why it's called human in the loop. So let's now compile that graph and let's also display it. As you can see, this is the very basic version of an agent. We've got our chatbot, our LLM, which has access to tools and this will create a tool message. The tool message will be passed to the LLM. It will create a final answer and then our graph comes to an end. So this is how it works. We create a human message and we say, hello, I'm John. And instead of just passing that message here to the graph, we gonna also pass the config as second argument. So here we pass in the messages because that's how our state is defined. So let's now execute that. And we can see that this is our message and back from the AI we get, hello John, how can I assist you today? So let's now do that again. I copy that code and create a new idea. So let's say thread ID 100. And again, we create a human message. This time we ask, sorry, did I already introduce myself? And since this is another thread ID, we will get the following answer. Sorry, did I already introduce myself? No, you haven't introduced yourself yet. Okay, so that's clear because we use a new thread ID. But if we ask the same question, with thread ID one, we now can see, yes, you already mentioned your name as John when you first started the conversation. As you can also see here, we've got a single AI message and here in the message or conversation with thread ID one, we've got an AI message, human message and another AI message. So this is how persistence works with Langgraph. Okay, so let's now ask a question which has to use a tool. So how is the weather in LA? Let's use thread ID one. And now we can see that we get an AI message back with no content. This means that we have to use tool or function calling. Here we can see the function or tool is the tabli search results tool. And if we have a look at our graph, which we can inspect with the get state method where we pass in our config object, which is important because we need that special thread ID so we get back a snapshot and this snapshot has got a next attribute. So we can see the next step that has to be taken. And here you can see that the next step is tools. So if we say everything is fine, this tool can be used, then we can call the invoke method again, pass in the config, very important again, that thread ID has to match the thread ID from before. So we always pass just the config object but now we don't pass any message, we just pass none. This means that Langgraph can proceed and we accept that the tool message is called. And now we can see the tool message is here from that weather API and we can see the current weather in LA is sunny with a temperature of yeah, almost 24 degrees. Okay, that's fine. And this is how you can stop a conversation and ask or force the LLM to ask for permission before it uses a tool. That's how this works. So in this case, we were fine that the LLM is allowed to use a tool and we were fine with the result, but it can be different. Let's say we want another conversation now with a thread ID two and ask again, how is the weather in LA? Again, it should use a tool. If we have a look at that again, it stops and we get back the AI message. And now instead of just passing none, we want to modify the state and not actually let the LM use its tool. So what we're gonna do is we get the state by passing here the config, we get our snapshot and the snapshot has got a values attributes. So this gives us now access to the complete state of our graph, which we currently have. Now we access the messages attribute and to access the latest question, we pass in minus one as index here and then we're gonna pretty print this message and as we can see the query here was the weather in LA we've got a tool call ID 
and this is what we're gonna now use to create a custom message. So we're gonna say that it's only five degrees warm. So we're gonna create a new list of messages. This is a tool message. This is what we modify now. And we're gonna pass in it's only five degrees. This is normally what comes from the API. We pass in the tool call ID. As you can see, we access the tool calls attribute from the existing message. Index uh, zero is the tool and this is the ID. So we're gonna create a tool message and for the iMessage we can create or use that answer here. So that's the final answer from the LLM, but faked, we answer that. And now we can update the state. We pass in the config, we pass in new messages, the new messages will be added. And then if we have a look at our state again, we can see that this is the result. It's only five degrees warm. So we modified the tool message and also the I message. If we now ask again, how warm was it again? We pass in thread ID two, then the LLM will answer based on the history and not use a tool again. So it's five, day, uh, five degrees warm today in LA is the answer of the LLM based on the history which we manipulated. So this is how we can not only make an LLM stop to ask for permission, but we can also overrule and override messages from the tool and also of the AI by manipulating the state of a graph. So now I show you another example with more customized state. So it looks pretty similar. We've got our messages again. We pass in the add messages, a utility function here to annotate it. So the messages will be just added again, but we've got a new flag called ask human, which is a Boolean. And this will be yeah true or false because it's a Boolean. And if the LLM, needs to ask a so-called expert, then we will be asked as human, otherwise it will use a tool. So a little bit more complex than the example before. So let's run that code. And now we're gonna use a custom tool. So this time we're gonna use a tool which we define with the tool decorator and we call it request assistance. For the LLM, we provide a doc string called escalate the conversation to an expert. Use this if you are unable to assist directly or if the user requires support. So if the LLM decides that a user wants to have a conversation with a human being, then it will route the conversation to a human. This could be, for example, used in a customer support bot. I think that's a very nice and useful uh, mechanism there. So, so this is also why I use this kind of example here in this video. Then again, we gonna create our LLM. We provide our tools and instead of now providing only a single tool, we also gonna provide the request, request assistance tool. Now we've got a list of tools, now two tools instead of only one. And then we also gonna create our utility functions again. So this time we use the invoke method again on the messages which are stored in the messages key in the state. And we also set the ask human flag to false initially. And then we check if the response from the LLM has got a tool called attribute. And if that's the case, and we also got the name request assistance as tool call name, then we want to set the flag to true. And we're gonna update the state with the new messages and set ask human in this case to true. So this is the new state, which now comes uh, from this node. So we're gonna execute that. We now can create our graph here with the state graph class from LangGraph, we pass in our state. And again, we use the add node method for the chatbot where we pass in the chatbot function and we pass in the tools here with the tool node utility class where we pass in a list of tools. What's still missing here is the node for, for the human. So we're gonna create that. So we create two utility functions, create response, which returns a tool message where we pass in a string and also an AI message. And here we pass in that tool calls ID from the AI message. So this is how we gonna use tool calling. So we always need a tool calls ID in a special tool message and we need the same tool calling ID in the next AI message. So always a tool message with an ID has to follow, um, has to be followed by an AI message with the same ID. So this is why we create that this way. In the human node function, we're now gonna check if we've got this tool message and if that's not the case, you're gonna provide a default message, which is no response from human. So we did not update that in this case. 
So let's use this. Now add the method again to um, the graph. So here we pass in human as key and human node as our node function. And then we're gonna create a conditional edge. So if the state is ask human, so this gets set in this chatbot function, this sets it to true or false, then we gonna return human here. And otherwise we're gonna use the tools condition utility function. This always returns tools or end. So we've got these three conditional edges here. So the chatbot now routes to either human, tools, or just to end. The last step is now to create another edge from tools back to chatbot, from human back to chatbot, and set the entry point, which is also chatbot, because we always start with the LLM. We again create our checkpoint, our checkpointer with SQLite, gonna create an in-memory database, and now we're gonna interrupt before when we are in a human node. So only when we have got this, so a human has to be asked, then we will interrupt. Otherwise, tool calling will perform on its own. So now our graph looks, looks a little bit more complex. Now we've got human, which routes back to chatbot, and we can also route from chatbot to tools and back to chatbot. And only chatbot is able to end this process. So let's start with thread ID 42. Human message, I need ex some expert advice on how to plan a trip to Barcelona. So this is something that a service bot may not be able to answer, or you just don't want to let an LLM answer that. Then you can interrupt and let a customer support human answer that. And we can see that the AI message is none or an empty string, and we've got ask human true. So this will now force the LLM to stop we can also see that in the snapshot object, which has got this next attribute, here we've got human, and now we're gonna, gonna interrupt and override that. So we extract the last message, and we just provide this human response, and in our case, this now will create a final response, actually by an LLM. So we've got just best hotel and the best flight. So we now gonna update our state, and if we run that again, this time with none, then we'll, we will use that information to actually create a final response. And here, the LLM now creates a final response based on our information. I have received expert advice on planning a trip to Barcelona. Here are some recommendations. So the AI receives that information from us and provides that information to the user. Okay, great, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna make a deep dive into the checkpointer system and we will create our own Postgres-based solution, which is actually quite advanced, but I think many of you might that find helpful because you don't want to use, let's say, SQLite in production. So, see you next video. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.